Hello everybody and Happy New Year! This video is about the new year, so uh, it is 2023 now and I thought what better way to start off the year than by, well, figuring out all the groups of order equal to the year. So, 2023, it turns out, is a year I wish I was teaching abstract algebra because this problem is going to turn out to be so perfect for the class. So whoever is teaching it, you're lucky. What a great problem you get to assign. So let's see what we got here. Uh, most important thing for this problem, or if you were, uh, say, taking a uh, oh, like a Putnam exam this year, is to know the prime factorization of 2023. And it turns out that this is 7 times 17 squared. All right. So uh, I actually was able to do that by hand, wouldn't you know it? Yeah, I divided by 2, I divided by 3, I divided by 5. 5 didn't go in, 3 didn't go in, 2 didn't go in. But 7 did, and it went in 289 times, and 289 is 17 squared. So we win. Okay, well, let's then ask, since we know the prime factorization, how many different CELO subgroups we have of the different, uh, corresponding to the different primes. Now, I always start with the largest primes. Uh, so let's see. Let's look at P equals 17, and I want to know uh, what is N17, okay? So this is equal to the cardinality of the uh, collection, oops, where's our, there we go, cardinality of the collection of CELO 17 subgroups of low, let's say G is a group with order 2023. So I could say this is going to be the size of the collection of CELO subgroups for the prime 17. And we know by the CELA theorems that N17 divides 7. Okay, so you get rid of the 17 squared, it just divides the 7. And we also know that N17 is congruent to 1 modulo 17. Okay, well, uh, there's not so many numbers that divide 7, right? So this tells us N17, since it divides 7, is either 1 or 7. Uh, but, well, 1 is congruent to 1 mod 17, but 7 is not. Right? So 7 is definitely not congruent to 1 mod 17. So this implies that N17 is equal to 1. So there is a unique CELO 17 subgroup. Okay? So this implies there exists a unique CELO 17 subgroup. Okay, so a unique subgroup of order 17 squared. Okay, and uh, maybe we'll give a name to it. Uh, let's call this, I don't know, how about Q? All right, now let's look at the CELO subgroups for the prime 7. So we know, again, by the CELO theorems that the number of 7, uh, the CELO 7 subgroups divides 17 squared, or 289. We also know that N7 has to be congruent. Oop, where's our eraser again? Not working today. Uh, N7 has to be congruent to 1 modulo 17. All right, but if uh, N7 divides 289, well, there's not so many choices then. So N7, okay, it could be 1, uh, it could be 17, or it could be 289. Those are the only divisors of 289. And, well, let's see, which of these is congruent to 1 mod 17? Well, let's see. Uh, or, oh, I said mod 17, of course. We mean here mod 7. Okay, so let's see. 1 is definitely congruent to 1 mod 7. Uh, 17 is congruent to 3 mod 7. And 289, well, let's see. 7 goes into 280, so then it goes into 287. So this is, uh, yep, N7, or rather, um, uh, 289, right, is going to be congruent to 2 mod 7. So that doesn't work either. So in fact, this implies that also N7 is equal to 1. And so there exists a unique... CELO 7 subgroup. Okay, now I could just give it a name like P, but I actually know something very specific because the size of a CELO 7 subgroup is exactly 7. And there's only one group of order 7, right? It's a cyclic group of order 7. All right, so we now know that the group G has a unique cyclic group of order 7, and it has a unique CELO 17 subgroup. This will have order 289. Ah, but because they're unique, that tells you that they're normal in G. Ooh, so C7 is a normal subgroup of G, and this Q 
is a normal subgroup of G. Okay, so this is again, right, by the uniqueness of their orders. Okay, so within these orders, right, there's a unique uh, subgroup of order 289, a unique subgroup of order 7, so they must be uh, normal. Okay, but they're also going to intersect trivially. Ooh, is that obvious? Well, we know by Lagrange's theorem that this intersection has to have order that divides both C7 and Q's orders. Okay, so we know that the order of C7 intersect Q has to divide the order of C7, but it also has to divide the order of Q. But the order of C7 is 7, the order of Q is 17 squared. And the only thing that divides both 7 and 17 squared is 1. So this implies that the intersection has order 1, or if you like, C7 intersect Q is trivial. Ah, but this tells you then that G is exactly the direct product of the cyclic group of order 7 and Q. Okay, now what can we say about this Q? Well, Q itself is a group of order 17 squared. Ah, 17 is a prime, and of course we have this little rule, right? If the order of a group is equal to P squared, then the group is abelian. Ah, so this tells us that Q is abelian. So I now have a direct product of a cyclic group and an abelian group. Everything's abelian. So in fact, this tells me that G is an abelian group. Oh, that's pretty nice. Furthermore, since Q is specifically, right, like just this group of order 289 or 17 squared, and it's an abelian group, we know by the, the uh, finite... Uh, abelian group theorem, right, our, our fundamental theorem of finite abelian groups, that there's really only a couple of options for Q, right? So Q, which has order 17 squared, we know that Q is either going to be isomorphic to C17 cross C17, or Q is isomorphic oops, to two eight, the cyclic group of order 289. All right, that's it. That's the only way you can get uh, 289, right? We just use the prime factorization. So what this tells us ultimately is that there are only two isomorphism types of groups of order 2023. So G is isomorphic to C7 cross C17 cross C17, or G is isomorphic to C7 cross C289. And that's it. These are the only groups of order 2023 up to isomorphism. Everybody have a happy new year. We'll see you next time.